Hello, ladies, and welcome to another edition of Medical Today. I'm Jared Rutnam, and on today's Medical Day, we'll be taking a look at gastroenterology or gastro problems. We'll also be taking a look at uh, sports injuries in a short while. We'll be zoning into the meniscus problems that we all face, especially sportsmen. But for now, what we want to talk about is muscle and joint pains. Uh, it slows us down when it comes to having a lifestyle or probably an active lifestyle. You have joint pains and it gives you a lot of psychological problems when you have to deal with them and also carry on exercising. Now to talk about the topic and of course to give us more information on what muscle and joint pains are all about, we have uh, in an interview with us Inche Zulhazri Razali, the director slash pharmacist for the commercial division of Pharma Nyaga Burhad. He talks to us about what muscle and joint pains are all about. Let's take a look at this interview. Okay, normally muscle pain appears when you overstrain or you overexercise or sometimes you have a recurrent pain because of uh, uh, inflammation of the joints, things like that. It's all about the inflammation of the tissue of the muscle and you can feel it when it becomes uh, severe and that is when you need some treatment. Okay, normally we restrict the movement, right? Uh, but more often people are looking for immediate uh, solution, which is applying some creams or ointment, right? To feel the relief in that particular area. Okay, when you talk about muscle rub or joint rub, there are so many ointments and creams in the market that we can use to relieve the pain. Of course, when you look at the physiology of the pain, uh, the pain process in the muscle, they got a few process where uh, you can identify why the pain arises and how you can uh, treat them. Okay. Most of the products in the market mainly are the mental thing and you feel the heat or sometimes you feel the cooling part. Subsequently, you feel the, the heat. It's all about how to relieve the pain sensation. Okay, ferrosine is slightly different from the normal uh, muscle rub. Uh, it's from the herbal extract. Okay, the active ingredient is from the natural product, and it is categorized as non-rub. It's a medical device, in fact, and the act basically on the area where the process of pain uh, chemicals in the muscle uh, arise. Okay. So basically, it relieves the pain by stopping uh, the chemicals released in the muscle so that your brain won't translate into pain uh, 
more than uh, what it should be. Okay, ferrosine is from Europe. It's, it is produced from uh, herbal extract. Okay, it's slightly different from the normal uh, muscle cream. The mode of action is different. Okay, it's more acting on the uh, chemical release in the muscle, and it's not the heaty cream, and it's not greasy. Okay, it's well uh, convenience uh, to be used by all ages, including uh, children or pregnant women. It's very safe. It's a medical device category. Definitely it's not a drug. So you can find in many pharmacies in the street, in, uh, especially to our, at our Royal Pharma. And this cream can be applied in the, the area where you feel the pain. And uh, the relief will be felt uh, quite instantaneously. Okay? You can apply as regularly as possible. And most important, you feel the comfort when applying uh, perosine. Perosine acts on the first level of pain process in the muscle where the arachnoid acid uh, is released from the membrane. But the specific mechanism was not identified uh, because this is basically a non-drug. So those herbal extract in perosine, uh, they claim that acts on those area where the arachnoid acid was released. It's different from the uh, other painkillers where they treated specifically on the level of below arachnoid acid. So what I can suggest is uh, to use this perosine when you feel the pain on your muscle, on your waist, on your shoulders, so that it can give you the relief and you can feel the difference before and after. Again, it is not a drug and it's never be in the drug category everywhere in the world. The main significant or the clear difference between perosine and other products is it is not heaty, it is not greasy, and the texture is so smooth that you can feel like applying a moisturizer. Okay, so it is good for working people or those people going to the office and, and, and need something to relieve their uh, wrist or fingers or knee and it's suitable in, at, at any time of your day life. People of all ages, from young to old, at a certain point of time, will have a muscle pain or joint pain or, or frozen shoulders. Perosine is a product of choice because you can apply without any worries about side effects or any uh, discomfort because the formulation or the cream itself it feels very smooth and I believe you can feel the difference once you apply, apply one or twice a day with perosine. Okay, you can get perosine in various pharmacy in Malaysia, mainly in our Royal Pharma and some selected individual pharmacy. You can uh, seek some advice from the pharmacy, they will explain to you about perosine and also the things that perosine differ from the normal uh, muscle rub and I believe once you try perosine you can feel the difference. The Nation, a talk show from the current affairs desk with in-depth conversations on health women, property, culture and performing arts, only on the Nama News Channel.
Listen to views of industry captains. Analyze and examine trends and projections. Gain market insights from subject matter experts. Biz Talk, every Friday, only on BNC. Do you know what really happens to your mobile e-waste? Throwing them into the dustbin will only result in choking the landfills. Did you know that over 42 million mobile e-waste are not properly disposed of? And this amount will continue to grow. This will potentially cause toxic chemicals to seep into the ground. The environment will slowly be polluted, thus creating a multitude of health problems to us humans. Did you know that 90% of the materials used to make mobile phones and the accessories can be recovered and recycled? These can be reused to make anything and everything including electrical goods. Well, the good news is MCMC has initiated a mobile e-waste campaign. MCMC along with telecommunications companies have set up collection areas for the public to safely dispose their mobile e-waste at participating outlets. With 72 outlets nationwide including TM, U-Mobile, Maxis, DG, Cellcom and Altel, you can now dispose your e-waste easily and at your convenience. Join us to get 1 million recycled mobile e-waste for this campaign. Make a difference for a better world, better environment and better future. For more information, log on to mobileewaste.mcmc.gov.my. This initiative is brought to you by the Malaysian Communications Industry together with MCMC. Hello, ladies, and welcome back to Medical Today. I'm Jared Rutnam. From uh, what we spoke about just before we went for the break, uh, let's take a look at sports injuries, something we did last week or a couple of weeks ago. And uh, to join us in the studio uh, once again, or rather for the first time, sorry, Dr. Shamsul Iskandar bin Hussein. He is a consultant orthopedic surgeon from Ramsey Saim Darby Healthcare. He's here to weigh in on what uh, sports injuries are all about. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us, Doc. Uh, you've brought along a whole set of goodies with you sure. to talk about sports injuries. Right. And uh, rightly so, uh, just before we got into the studio, mm -hmm. we talked about how technical we can get sometimes when we talk about medical procedures or medical problems. Exactly. Now, you want to make this simple for us. I think that's yes. what you want to do here today. Right. And you want to talk about sports injuries. So. Right. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, you've picked uh, pick the meniscus to yes. be talked about. Why Correct. is meniscus your choice of uh, something to talk about today? Right. Okay. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank you for inviting me to, uh, to share my experiences with regards to this uh, injury, mm -hmm. which is the meniscus injury. Um, namely, uh, the reason for me choosing this topic because it is one of the most common injuries uh, uh, which I see in my clinic uh, set up, okay? As, uh, as you know that one of the, um, the common outdoor activities that uh, we, uh, to lead a healthy life, mm -hmm. uh, uh, performing exercises such as um, running, jogging, or playing uh, field, uh, field mm -hmm. soccer or football, or for that matter also doing aerobics or in, uh, indoor gym training. Right. So uh, one of the injuries, or one of the uh, common injuries sustains, um, besides having spra uh, sprains and strains to the muscles, to ligaments, mm -hmm. um, is actually uh, the lower limb injuries, uh, which namely within the knee joint itself, there's a structure called as meniscus. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this meniscus actually uh, uh, forms, um, uh, has a lot of uh, functions to our body. Right. Uh, namely, one being the cushion or the support for our knee joints, provide stability, 
um, restricts our movements mm -hmm. as a protection to our knee Maybe joint. Maybe can show us where the meniscus yeah. is and also uh, walk us through it. Yes. Yeah. So we do have a pair of meniscus. This is actually a fibrocartilaginous tissue, mm. um, which is actually present on above the surface of the tibial shin. Right, so it's right? a fibrocartilaginous tissue. Correct, yeah. yes. So, uh, namely, it has uh, uh, two sets of fibers. Mm -hmm. One which actually radiates strong, uh, surrounding it, they call it the radial fibers. And the other, the fibers which, uh, which is actually parallel to the surface of the bone, mm -hmm. which is called actually is the longitudinal fibers. And these two fibers, which uh, forms the uh, meniscus, um, uh, performs the function as what has been uh, said earlier. Uh, uh, most importantly, as the cushioning effect and also protecting the cartilage. So sort of a buffer cushion. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So what happens when it starts to wear out? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are namely two types of injuries uh, um, experienced by, the, by people. One is a traumatic tear, mm -hmm. all right, due to a sudden acute um, gland force to the meniscus, mm -hmm. which causes the tear to uh, which which causes the meniscus to tear or, or to rupture at a extreme uh, uh, state, or due to due to the wear and tear itself, which is called as a generative tear. Right. These two can happen during our uh, during life, mm -hmm. all right. So, um, as you were asking about with regards to the, the tear, the types of tear, mm -hmm. traumatic tear normally occurs during sporting activities. When you are, doing, uh, when you are running, you are jumping, or you are landing in an awkward position. Okay? Uh, whereas this um, degenerative tear, it's due, due uh, namely old age. Right. And of course, the, the most prevailing factor is the weight factor. Mm -hmm. Being heavy itself, uh, predisposed to this degenerative tear. Right. So let's talk about the latter now, degenerative right. tears. Yes. Uh, you say it's about age, probably about weight. Yes, uh, exactly. It's also something that comes with signs and symptoms. Correct. Early, you get early signs and symptoms. Yes. A lot of us overlook these symptoms. Ah, just a little pain here, like it's going to go off. Uh, now, when do we know mm -hmm. that we, go and, uh, we need to see our primary care or our, our primary health care provider yes. to find out what's going wrong there? Correct. So sometimes you get a bit of a dull ache and like, yeah, it'll yeah. go off, Correct. then it's done. So yeah. how long must this ache or pain or signs and symptoms have to be there before I report this to my uh, uh, doctor or Correct. my family doctor? Uh, well... The, the problem is that within our knees, knee itself, there's mm -hmm. many structures present, okay? It can be the ligaments, it can be the cartilage, it can be the meniscus, and also it can be the muscles. So most important is to identify what is the uh, proper diagnosis, mm -hmm. so that then only, the, um, then only the proper treatment can be initiated. Mm -hmm. As to what you have mentioned, um, how or when is the duration or when do you need to see a doctor? Well, as soon as possible. Right, so if, if it's knee pain, there yeah. are variables in play here Correct. and we need to find out what these variables are. Exactly, right. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, in these instances where you find that uh, when the symptoms like when you're, when you're uh, sudden deceleration, when you, stop from, um, when you try to stop after running, you try to prevent uh, a fall or something mm -hmm. like that, then you hear a popping sound. Right. Okay? Or suddenly you, you notice that there's a gradual swelling to your knee. And of course, there are the symptoms of pain, all right? Or there's a bruise present, or locking of the knees, they call mm -hmm. it the, uh, the lock. So if your knee is out, when yes. you lock, lock yeah. it outward, it Lo hurts. Locking of the knee means that you are unable to um, extend the knee from mm -hmm. the, basically from the flex uh, position. Right, so from here to this. Correct, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So when this happens, this is actually considered as an emergency. Okay? It, well, emergency in the sense that you cannot perform your normal day-to-day -day routine or activities. So this um, necessitates you to see a doctor. Mm -hmm. If a, if, um, and if um, if you have the so, uh, the facilities or the the means to, uh, to go to the, the hospital, by all means, then right. Uh, before we get into looking at your toys and and right. and the different things we yeah. can find out from what we have of here, course. let's talk yeah. about the people who are coming to see you now. Right. There's a lot of talk about uh, jogging. Some yes. say it's good. Some say it's not so Correct. good. 
people, there's a Japanese uh, lecturer or a Japanese scientist who's yeah. come up with midfoot strike. It's called slow jogging. Yes. You know, because they say people are hurting their joints. So what's the truth about exercise? People are playing futsal, right. football on hard courts these days. Correct. That, that can't be good for your knees. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With regards to exercise uh, alone, it is advocated. Yeah, because in our modern um, living, our nature, is that we are always um, sedentary. We are always on our seats, just like we are now, yeah, most times. Um, in the city, the lifestyle is that you sit in a car driving to work. Mm -hmm. And then when you reach the office, you sit on, uh, in front of your desk, in front of your laptop. And uh, you, keep, uh, you do your type, uh, typing, or you do your let, uh, writing letters or documents you'll be sitting for more than half of your day. Right. All right? So, and our body is not actually meant just for sitting. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, in, in order for us to be active uh, physically and also mentally, uh, exercise is, is not only a must, it should be mandatory. Right. All right? Exercise yes. is a must for everyone. Correct. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, how else? How, okay. I think we can cancel that because mm -hmm. I want to comment about our Prime Minister. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, non nonetheless, um, the, is uh, the issue arises that exercise is actually good for the body because in a way it prevents all the lifestyle diseases. Uh, you can avoid um, developing diabetes, hypertension and uh, raise cholesterol level. Those uh, actually have been shown to be reduced by just by doing exercise alone. Right. And for this matter, uh, running or jogging is good because it provides um, uh, so-called the few of the exercises. Mm -hmm. One of them, besides the physical exercise, is actually this is the aerobic exercise. Right. Okay, where it helps to exercise your lung functions, your, uh, your breathing, and also, of course, the blood circulation. Right, but what's interesting here is that right. Some of us, yeah. you know, are, we have joint pains and yes. that inhibits us from wanting to go out. It doesn't motivate us. Correct. Right? And we are afraid that if I do go out there yes. and be active, Correct. My, my, my joints are going to hurt even more. Exactly. Well, we're going to take a short break. Yeah. When we come back, you're going to walk us through meniscus pain, what it is yeah. and uh, what we can do Correct. or what we shouldn't do, sure. all that and more. When we come back right, right here on Medical Day, yeah. we're joined by Dr. Shamsul Iskandar from Ramsey Saim Darby Healthcare. Stay with us. Mana ada duit? Ni aku sedut, nanti aku datang bawa duit. Aku pergi dengan kau, eh? Boleh lah. Hei! Jauhi dada, dada membunuh. Medical awareness at your fingertips. Surgical procedures and understanding the human body. Critical conditions need critical answers.
Catch us on Medical Today to find out more on Ramsey Time Derby Healthcare only at Banama News Channel. Brings you the latest in current affairs, lifestyle and entertainment. As well as one-on-one -on -one discussions with fascinating personalities. Only on Onama News Channel. Gain insights from the people with the capacity to translate vision into reality. Interviews with corporate leaders. Monday, only on BNC. Hello and welcome back to Medical Today. I'm Jared Rutnam and together with me uh, we do have Dr. Shamsul Iskandar bin Hussein. He's a consultant orthopedic surgeon from Ramsey Saim Dabi Healthcare talking about sports injuries, more importantly focusing, uh, focusing on the meniscus. Now, um, a question for you. If yes. you have knee problems, right. who treats you? Well, I have my colleagues, huh? okay. the, the other doctors. The other doctors, yes, of yeah. course. Now, do you, do you actually self-diagnose sometimes? Um, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Because based on my experience and my expertise, I will try to deduce mm -hmm. what is it exactly. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, I will get the confirmation by my colleagues. Right. That question came from one of the production crew. You know, oh, I see. They're always okay. joint pains and we always Correct. have to get a second opinion. Now, yes, yes. going back to the meniscus, Correct. you wanted to show us how wha what signs and symptoms come right. about and uh, what we can do. So let's yes. just start with uh, how you investigate uh, meniscus problems or okay. injuries. Yeah. Well, um, um, the, um, Gerard, the first thing that most important actually is the history. Mm -hmm. Well, by uh, acquiring the appropriate or the as, um, exact nature of the mechanism of injury, um, the duration, mm -hmm. the, the location, and also the intensity, uh, we can uh, I can deduce uh, what sort of uh, tissue injuries uh, does the person suffers from. Right. Okay. So you're sort of a Sherlock Holmes also. Right? Yes, definitely, yeah, because yeah. we have to do all these uh, uh, so-called uh, deductive uh, deductions mm -hmm. to rule out any other possible causes, but at the same time to narrow down the possibilities to the injury. Right. All right. Once uh, we determine that the possibility of a meniscus injury is present. We also um, we also have to confirm it, right? Um, and by um, how to confirm it? Normally, we do some of the special tests. Mm -hmm. There's a sp some special tests or maneuvers that we perform on the person, on the patient himself, on the bedside, uh, by the bedside itself. Uh, this special test called um, uh, McMurray's test, the mm -hmm. Sully test. Pivot, um, all these tests. So the, the various tests for you to ascertain definitely what the problem is, Correct. or just get close to where the problem yeah, this is. This is uh, these are actually the clinical examinations, mm -hmm. all right? Because some other injuries may also mimic uh, meniscus injury. Uh, for example, the cartilage, because right. although when you perform all the special tests, we still cannot narrow down all this uh, the injury, mm -hmm. all right? So the next step um, to um, after the clinical examination. Uh, are the investigations right. okay? And for the meniscus injury, normally there are two so, uh, two sets of inve investigations done. One is the non-invasive, and the other is the invasive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the non-invasive, um, uh, the benchmark for meniscus injury is actually magnetic resonance imaging (MRI), mm -hmm. because uh, as you know, MRI can show everything, almost everything, but it depends on the specialists of the imaging or the radiologist to uh, determine or to basically identify those injured structures. So very quickly, how much does an x-ray show you that, okay. it, you, that, that you need to take an yes. MRI? Correct. Some people believe that, 
oh, the doctor is uh, wanting to do an MRI because yes. he wants to charge us more, but that's not the case. Definitely. Yeah, so yeah. so wh what does an X-ray do, MRI does, uh -huh. that an X-ray does not do? Okay, good question. X-ray actually is a, is a radiation uh, equipment mm -hmm. uh, which actually which, uh, sends this radiation and determines the calcium content of the structure. As you, um, as you know, bones has a lot of calcium composition. That's why it can be visualized by X-ray or the other name for it is a mm -hmm. All right. Whereas MRI actually uh, detects the numbers of the hydrogen ion isotopes and this is translated into images and, and these uh, images are actually um, will be analyzed by the radiologists and will be interpreted by them and in turn um, MRI is basically can detect most of the structures or if not all um, uh, it will show and illustrate the structures in the limbs or in the body for that matter whereas for the x-rays it's only um, done to determine the condition of the bones plus the joint structures. Right. So meaning uh, the bones and the joints. So the MRI is sort of a gold standard in ascertaining uh, what the problem um, is? Uh, not true actually. Mm -hmm. The gold standard for, Im uh, for investigation for the, uh, for the knee joints for in this where the meniscus is located is actually the fiber optic uh, procedure which is mm -hmm. called arthroscopy. Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, because arthroscope is where, uh, by, uh, by performing a keyhole uh, incision to the knee joint and you poke in inside the joint a camera uh, which magnifies the images. Right. So this is actually the gold standard. But mm -hmm. it's actually it's an invasive procedure and it's usually routinely done when you're performing um, surgical treatments after the uh, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why there are actually the uh, the benchmark one is the non-invasive MRI, and the other is the invasive, minimally invasive um, uh, arthroscopy. Right now, coming back to the meniscus injury, right. uh, you wanted to show us something yeah. on on this model here. Correct. Okay. So when there is actually injury, uh, twisting injury to the meniscus, mm -hmm. so the meniscus may get uh, torn within the area, and it may actually slipped out, and when there is a slippage. Mm -hmm. or there is actually um, uh, this um, slippage to the meniscus, it can actually lock the knee. Right. And this prevents the knee from extending. Mm -hmm. All right? And besides that, there will always be a development of uh, bleeding inside the joint, which, uh, which is termed as hematrosis. And this will cause the swelling to the knee. All right? and, uh, but namely, uh, besides the injury to the meniscus, sometimes the neighboring structures, such as the cartilage, may also be scuffed out mm -hmm. by this uh, meniscus leading to cartilage injury. Right. Okay, one of the problems leading to osteoarthritis later on. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's like bad news. So do you have yeah. a, a, a view of what it look like if there's cartilage problems? Yes, uh, I yeah, do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So, so mm -hmm. here I would like to share with you mm -hmm. uh, a structure of a um, cartilage which is actually this is just a uh, depiction right. of how it looks in the, of a healthy knee joint right. with the cartilage intact. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the other one, once there is an advanced osteoarthritis uh, arises, there is actually there's a wear and there's a wearing off of the cartilage, right. exposing the bare bone so when, side. So when, when cartilage wears off, mm -hmm. this is what it looks like. This is the one of the end stage of this osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, very quickly, we've yeah. got about three minutes left. If we okay. can quickly right. uh, talk about preventive measures yes. and uh, how important accurate diagnosis is. Correct. Uh, yeah. 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 Most of the my most of my patients or most of the athletes who, uh, which were seen by me always have a uh, question, which is, how do I prevent those injuries or how do I prevent getting injured, right, from meniscus injury? So my advice is actually one is that. Um, you, uh, the first thing is you have to have a good, um, str um, so-called, you have a strong mm -hmm. uh, and also um, healthy leg, meaning right. that you have always been on regular exercise, okay, to make it strong and to make it stable. And secondly, you must always be um, uh, so-called, um, uh, what uh, you you shouldn't be fatigued or mm -hmm. you shouldn't be tired right. when you are involved in games mm -hmm. because when you are tired 
there's a liability that you get injured. You, you get injured. Right. All right. And thirdly, when you are involved in sports, uh, so-called the um, courtyard sports or mm -hmm. the indoor games, uh, this matter of your footwear. Right. Okay. Appro wearing the appropriate uh, footwear, mm -hmm. uh, all those suitable shoes, and not wearing old steel shoes, those are actually preventing you from getting all right. these injuries. So depending on what sport you're doing, you need Definitely. to figure out what is good footwear yes. for that sport exactly. in which you are taking part Correct. in. Right. Yeah. Right. And of course, the other thing is that before starting any games, mm -hmm. you have to perform all those uh, stretching, strengthening, warming up exercises because this will keep your uh, muscles, your um, uh, tissues alert yeah. and thus preventing from having any accidental injuries. Right. It's very interesting you, yeah. you're ending uh, with that and yeah. uh, uh, warming up is so important. Correct. There are just so many videos out yes. there with or auto surgeons teaching you how to do a decent warm up. You just go to YouTube and you yes. get a, a warm up. So the warm yes. up is very important. Yes. It's, yeah? it's crucial mm -hmm. because um, in order to avoid experiencing these injuries, it's actually is the is the best way of um, not getting injured at all. Right. On that note, Dr. Shamsul, right. it was a pleasure and an honor having you here. Thank you very much Same for joining us. Thank you very much for well, having me here. I do hope you gained. Uh, quite a bit of an insight as to what uh, meniscus injury is all about. We'd like to thank Dr. Shamsul one again, once again for coming in to uh, share with us his ideas and his thoughts on sports injuries right here on Medical Today. Stay with us, we'll take a short break and come back right after this. This is Medical Today on BNC. anda apa yang sebenarnya berlaku kepada isi setelefon bibit anda? Membuangnya ke dalam bakul sampah akan hanya mengakibatkan tapak pelupusan menjadi sesak. Tahukah anda lebih 42 juta isi setelefon bibit tidak dilupuskan dengan cara yang betul dan jumlah ini akan terus meningkat? Ini berpotensi menyebabkan bahan toksik kimia teresap ke dalam tanah. Secara perlahan-lahan, alam sekitar akan tercemar sekaligus menimbulkan pelbagai masalah kesihatan kepada manusia. Tahukah anda bahawa 90% daripada bahan-bahan yang digunakan untuk membuat telefon bimbit boleh dikita semula? Ianya boleh diguna semula untuk menghasilkan apa sahaja termasuk barangan elektrik. Berita baiknya ialah MCMC telah mengambil inisiatif memperkenalkan kempen isi setelefon bimbit atau mobile e-waste. MCMC bersama syarikat-syarikat telekomunikasi menubuhkan pusat pengumpulan di cawangan yang mengambil bahagian untuk orang ramai melupuskan isi setelefon bimbit mereka. Dengan 72 cawangan di seluruh negara termasuk PM, U-Mobile, Maxis, DG, Cellcom dan Altel, anda boleh melupuskan isi setelefon bimbit dengan mudah dan pada bila-bila masa. Sertai kami untuk mencapai kempen 1 juta kita semula isi setelefon bimbit. Lakukanlah perubahan untuk kebaikan dunia, alam sekitar dan masa depan. Untuk maklumat lanjut, layari mobileewaste.mcmc.gov.my Inisiatif ini dibawakan kepada anda oleh Industri Komunikasi Malaysia bersama MCMC. Nine Eleven menampilkan pelbagai segmen menarik khas buat anda. Saksikan Nine Eleven setiap Isnin hingga Jumaat 9 pagi hanya di bernama News Channel. Listen to views of industry captains. Analyze and examine trends and projections. Gain market insights from subject matter experts. Biz Talk, every Friday, only on BNC. Medical awareness at your fingertips. Surgical procedures and understanding the human body. Critical conditions need critical answers. Catch us on Medical Today 
To find out more on Ramsey Syme Derby Healthcare, only at Banama News Channel. kerana dah ada syabung. Ha, ini anak punya lah ni. Ha, sampai masuk suatu khabar lagi. Ini eh, memalukan kakak kita. Ini ya. anak punya lah ni. Hei. Eh, betul lah. Eh, Yang Amik, dah ada aku, aku lah. Bukan mak aku lah. Kau tengok sini. Hei, pekat. Weh, Siti. Ayah kau mati sebab dah ada kan? Di depan, kalau kau nak bayar, lagi teruk daripada yang aku buat. Siti tak kuat. Siti jangan tak kuat Mama ada sayang. Jangan biarkan keluarga anda menderita kerana dadah. Laporan pelbagai dimensi. Memaparkan isu semasa, pelancongan, warisan dan budaya. Dari dalam dan luar negara. Jurnal Pernama, setiap Isnin, Pernama News Channel. Semuanya tentang anda. Listen to views of industry captains. Analyze and examine trends and projections. Gain market insights from subject matter experts. Biz Talk, every Friday, only on BNC. Gain insights from the people with the capacity to translate vision into reality. Interviews with corporate leaders, Monday, only on BNC. Hello, ladies, and welcome back to the final segment of Medical Today. And in the studio with me is Dr. Prabhjot Singh Sidhu, a consultant gastroenterologist from Ramsey Saim Dabi Healthcare. He is not only a gastroenterologist, he's also a hepatologist, yeah? Yep. So uh, let's just uh, get past this jargon first or, or this terminology, gastroenterologist and uh, hepatologist. Well, basically, I deal with everything from your mouth mm -hmm. all the way to the bottom. Right everything in here and your liver, basically anything in this section, and all this stuff that is not dinner conversation. Right. That's right. what I deal oh. with, yeah. Okay, but, but the, the problem is, uh, for the longest time, people only specialized in gastroenterology. Now, yeah. uh, now it's a larger area that, yeah. It is, mm -hmm. it is, it is, because it's... So if I have a problem with the liver, yes. I, I see you because Indeed. you're a hepatologist. Exactly. Everything right. in this area here, mm -hmm. it's all the pancreas, the liver, the gallbladder, all that is, is in the same uh, section, the same area that's covered by gastroenterologists and hepatologists. Mm -hmm. It is slightly different, the areas we do, but it is all interlinked. Right. Uh, uh, one conversation that one would want to have with you yeah. is fatty liver. Everyone talks about it now. Yes. People are not fat, but they have a fatty liver. Yes. So the, the instant someone finds out that you have a fatty liver, they ask you if you drink. Yes. Now, not many of us drink these nope. days, nope. but we still do have a fatty liver. Ex Why is that? Exactly, because we are the fattest nation in the whole of Asia. That's the first thing. Malaysia, Bole. Malaysia, Bole, yeah. Bole Gamor. Yeah. That's Bole the first thing. That's yeah. the thing, and you've done it. But yeah. the thing is that fatty liver is associated with five times increased risk of diabetes, mm -hmm. three times increased risk of uh, uh, colorectal cancer, and then odds ratio of heart disease by 10. Mm -hmm. Though it may seem asymptomatic, it is problematic. <coughs> It's a big problem there. Seven percent of thin people have mm -hmm. fatty liver. Right. It's much more in Asia. Right. So, okay. Now that we're talking about fatty liver, and yeah. this is not in the script. No. I, I need to get this out in the sure, open. Sure, of course. It, it, it's like a elephant in the room, and yeah. no one's talking about it. Yeah. Over the radio, you hear all the time. 
take this and yeah, the liver I gets knew better. Ask me you know, I yeah. Knew. There is no evidence that any of that yeah. is effective enough. You heard it here yeah. on Medical Today, okay? No, no evidence. No, there are tons of supplements yeah, out there. Yeah. The reason they're still called supplements is because mm -hmm. there's not enough evidence. Right. Uh, and some may work, but did it work because they were going to get better? Mm -hmm. Or it did actually do some not enough evidence? The current evidence that is there to fix a fatty liver is first addressing the cause. If you're an alcoholic, address that. Hepatitis B or C, address that. Or if you're overweight or have right. high cholesterol, high blood pressure, address those things and everything will be It's disappear. interesting that I have friends, you know, on the weekend, you know, they like go, going and going for a drink or two and yeah. they, they tell me, you know, they swear by it and say, yeah. bro, you know, every weekend now I can drink a lot more because of this. Well, <laughs> what, because of having that thing? Yeah, I yeah, think, by, by, uh, by, by taking uh, liver supplements. I think they're mistaken. I think they're mistaken. They, they are probably doing so, something that, for example, there is evidence to say that people who who, who, who uh, drink beer is worse than drinking uh, wine. But actually, they've done studies where you compare what shopping they did in Tesco, mm -hmm. and you look at the wine drinkers, olives and all, uh, right. cheeses, beer drinkers, burgers, mm -hmm. chips. Mm -hmm. It may not just be the, the alcohol, great things it's just the other yeah, things yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah so yeah. people are also shifting from beer to wine. Mm -hmm. They're getting now, a bit posh. Now, coming back to gastroenterology, sure. there's a lot of um, misconception with regards to Let's just say gastritis Yes. to begin with. A lot of people, some people believe that it's the times you eat. Some yeah. people believe that it's uh, stress. Some people believe that it's uh, gas in your stomach. Um, that, that, there's a lot of theories out there. So yeah. well, what's, what's the one-on-one -on, -one on this? I think, I think it, if, you, if you do have pain mm -hmm. or any complaints, describe your symptoms. Don't just call it mm -hmm. gastritis because it may be something different to you. Maybe something to me. As to causes, multifactorial. You can have H. pylori, mm -hmm. uh, which is a bacteria associated with gastric cancer, right. leads more of these problems. Uh, stress does play a part, wrong mm -hmm. kind of food. Timing, unfortunately, does play a part in all of this. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're young, we think we're indestructible. We do anything we want. As right. we get older, we forget that we're not as strong as we used to be. Mm -hmm. It's a multifactorial thing, but it's not a matter of just gastric. Right. It's the symptoms that you need to put together. Mm -hmm. You may or may not have that. So here's the interesting thing about gastroenterology. If you look at the medication being given out, I mean, a lot, lot of different doctors like physicians or internal specialists have, mm. uh, uh, have an arsenal and a range of medication. But sure. you guys have your PPIs, yeah. you have your antacids, you have your histamine 2 blockers and also yeah. your uh, promotility agents. Sure. That's all you have to play with. And we, we've been using the same drugs for yeah. the last 25 years. Yes. Uh, is there something wrong or is there something right here? Uh, it's right, but not, it's not a full picture. You see, mm -hmm. it's not a matter. You've got a pain here, take these drugs, off you go, you'll be fine. It never works that way. It's all individualized. Now, you may be one that's stressed. You may be one that skips meals. Addressing those factors are as important as having the drugs. The mm -hmm. drugs help you get better. But without addressing that, that your lifestyle changes, you're going to be in these drugs forever. And that's, that's not the right way to go. Now, I spent the last 20 years in the UK. Majority of people there, you need to put them on medicines for whatever reason, they have to stay in a long time. 90% of my patients here get off medicines after two months and they're fine. Right. It's taking the time to, to delve into why this is happening. Is it really a problem? Is it actually medicines that you need or is it just a subtle change in your lifestyle or how you approach things? Mm -hmm. And that does the job 90% so, of the time. So what do you think is the problem? Because it really irks me when I walk into a pharmacy these days yeah. and you ask for a box of PPIs and they're telling you, no, take aloe vera juice, it helps. And I'm like, come on. Man. Oh, right, well, I'm, 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 I'm scientifically trained, so until I see the evidence, the yeah. hard evidence, I would not say have that. Yeah. Okay? I mean, there is evidence saying the alkaline water and the Mediterranean diet is best for you mm -hmm. if you had gastritis kind of thing. But that's about the only evidence there is, unless something new has just come up. But otherwise, it's your general lifestyle changes. The medicines get you from point A to B, mm -hmm. but from B all the way to Z to Z, it's your lifestyle. It's going to either you're going to just spend your time with your friends or spend your time seeing me on the weekend mm -hmm. because of your gastric pain. So it's actually a very individualized thing and taking control of your own health. That is as important as seeing the doctor. Right, right. Now, what we want to delve into uh, right now is for a while in the 90s till about, say, seven years ago, you get a lot of doctors do having their own practice. Okay, gastroenterologists, mm -hmm. you go to the clinic, they give you a shot, you go to sleep. 
they put the scope down your throat, yeah. they do a scope, then they wake up, they give you a DVD. You've got your, your well-produced DVD yeah. given to you. You can go home and check it out. Yeah. But these things are fast changing. And now, yeah. apparently, uh, transnasal endoscopy is the new sliced bread. Well, it's not a new slice of bread. It's yeah. just not used as much here as it should be done. I mean, okay, okay firstly, that CD you talk about. Mm -hmm. Do you know anyone who's ever looked at the CD? Exactly. I've you, tried. Yeah, I've no, tried. You, even if you look at it, you don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. It's just oh, a bit of here, a bit of there. Kind of. Now, I'll put it this way. Mm -hmm. When you have a scope, you're going to have it down your mouth. Yeah. Now, I dare you try this now. Open your mouth and try and swallow. You can't, You right? can't, yeah. The minute the scope goes down, you think, I need to swallow. And then when I tell you don't swallow, you're going to try and swallow. Mm -hmm. With the mouse guy in there, you can't swallow, you're going to panic. And then there, the first thing starts. And then it hits the back of your mouth, you start a gag reflex, which is, by the way, a very protective mechanism we all humans have. It's mm -hmm. good. But everybody thinks something is wrong. And the endoscopist will start panicking, oh my God, the patient's being uncomfortable. They may rush, they may f give sedation, which is not necessarily needed. If you explain the procedure properly, and then if you rush, you miss things, and so on and so forth. These are problems with your conventional endoscopy. Now, transnasal endoscopy is slightly different. How we do it is you'll be sat opposite, opposite me just like this. Mm -hmm. We spray and numb the nose, and the scope goes in the nose. Now, you probably think, oh my God, this is a big one. I'll give you an example. Now, I've got these two little props. Right. This battery, a AA battery, is the size of your standard scope that's going down your mouth now. Mm -hmm. It's pretty big. This little pen was the size of a transnasal scope. Now, it's a small pen. You can see the difference. Right. Uh, I don't know if you want to zoom in, but mm -hmm. that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. Now, this goes to the back of the nose. It is not painful if you prepare it properly. And because it goes to the back and down the back, a couple things happen. One, you don't need a mouth guard. You can swallow. You can talk. One patient decided to sing to prove a point. Right. And she did. Mm -hmm. Not very good, but she did. Okay? And then because it doesn't hit the gag reflex there, there's no gagging. Mm -hmm. And you have the whole test, wide awake, set up, you can lie down if you like, and you look in the same screen as me. Now, when you look in the same screen, you not only have to listen to what we tell you about, oh, this is what you've got, and here's the DVD that you will never look at, but you actually see what's happening. You understand that this is taking control of your own condition yourself. Right. It's education. You see the redness, you see the ulcer, and you know, right, this is my problem. This is why I'm having the pain there. Mm -hmm. You understand it. Now you'll take more active measures to So, So if this is a great way... Uh, with technology, moving yeah. forward with technology. Now, why aren't we using it? Why, why isn't it widely used in Malaysia? Okay, it, well, in Japan is widely. I think the main thing is this, is the preparation that it takes for the nose. Some people mm -hmm. doesn't, they think nose, oh my God, something's wrong with the nose. But it's actually spraying the nose and numbing it and giving it a few moments to work. Now, there are studies to say which would pay patient tolerate better, spray in the mouth, spray the nose. Mm -hmm. Spray the mouth, they'll happily taste it because they know it right. needs to go down. Anything goes in your nose, you firstly think, no, it must come out, not in. Mm -hmm. But it's just a spray. The way to look at it is the sensation is when you were a kid, you jumped to the swimming pool, a little bit of water went in your nose, that's right. what it feels like on the first spray. Mm -hmm. The more we spray, the less you feel, and it's, it's, it's comfortable for patients. It's not picked up because the time and effort it takes for it. But right. if it's more comfortable for the patient, surely it's worth the time mm -hmm. and effort. Mm -hmm. So once you, you do a scope, what can you ascertain? So, and, and how deep does a scope go? A, a scope with regards to the conventional transnasal? Or transnasal. Exactly the same as the mm -hmm. other scope. Mm -hmm. It goes to, to your esophagus all the way down, to your stomach, mm -hmm. and then into your small bowel, um, D1, D2 in your duodenum. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same as a conventional gastroscope. The only difference is, is that this scope is primarily used for diagnostic. Because mm -hmm. the channels are very small, if you have a big bleeding ulcer, it's not the right thing to do, then you need the conventional ones. But otherwise, it is, it is the same. It is exactly the same. In fact, because your esophagus is always closed and something has to move it apart as it goes down, something smaller, mm -hmm. size of this instead of this, is surely more comfortable as it is, right. and, and otherwise it's exactly the same. Right. Now, for those of us with, with GERD problems, and those of us who've been suffering from GERD problems all our lives, they say there's surgery to help with yeah. GERD and all that. Uh, some doctors say surgery doesn't work. What are your thoughts on this? I think uh, for this GERD business, it's a four-step thing. One is always lifestyle. It mm -hmm. always, especially in Malaysia, Definitely. I hate that, I hate that. I'm mean, looking is. for the magic pill but, but all you, the time. But do, do you know yeah. what? Do you know yeah. what? Lifestyle is not a matter of here, yeah. go fix it yourself. Mm -hmm. you got to see a gastroenterologist and we'll tell you how to do it. It's not figure out yourself. Then there's medicines. And the fourth one, I missed the third one on purpose, the fourth one is this reflux surgery kind of thing. But there are new things out in the market, things like uh, Streta, for example, mm -hmm. where it delivers therapy to the lower part of your esophagus that thickens the muscle. Right. And that is done via endoscopy. Streta, no cuts, so it's, it's like the new gym for the esophagus. 
Kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. pretty much. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And within two months, you're off your medicines. Uh, the thing's nice and tight, and you get no more reflux. You n didn't need a cut. And if people worried about the cost, it's about half the cost, as far as I've been told. But it's not even something new. It's mm. just people are not aware of the existence of these things. Mm. Right. Um, so, yeah. So before we get a couple of more facts on transnasal endoscopy, let's talk about probiotics and yeah. you know, kefir. There's so many things out there in the market. It's good, it's good for gut health, so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. Do you give these things out? No. no. I, I, don't, I don't. You see, the, the problem is, is that you've got one bottle that's got one strain, and then you've got one that's got 16 to 18 strains. Right. Now, your small bowel is where you target these things. You've got billions, trillions of bacteria. Uh, over 500 different species and whatnot. Now you're giving one strain, if you gave the strain that is missing, lucky you, then you might get a better result. Mm -hmm. But you gave things that you already have, it doesn't do anything. Right. So, so it's very hit and miss with some wood. But the problem there, is... There's a strain LP299V or something that's yeah. meant to cure IBS. No, 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 see? no. You see, IBS also is a whole thing. Don't itself. believe what you hear out there. No, yeah. you, 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 need to, you need to go and get the facts, right? Now, mm -hmm. Probiotics is still an ever-changing thing. And, mm -hmm. and recent work, recent studies, uh, meta-analysis of old work and new ones mm -hmm. really add very little. Now, what it really says is that it works better for some people, it doesn't. Now, I always tell people, why buy something from uh, a jar when you can take it yourself? Kefir, yogurt, mm -hmm. uh, kimchi, all stuff full of probiotics. Mm -hmm. Try those things. But more than often, more than often, it's exact, it comes back to the pure basics, sitting down with the patient, going through what they have throughout the day, how they have it, altering those things. These probiotic things can help. There's nothing wrong with taking it. Mm -hmm. But don't put your bets purely on probiotics. You right. may have something else that's going on. They need to be addressed first and then go from there. Mm -hmm. now, probiotics has its role in very specific situations. For example, uh, Crohn's disease, mm -hmm. for example, uh, antibiotic-induced diarrhea. Jeez, certain we need, we cancer. need to extend this to another hour, uh, mate. We can talk about uh, two <laughs> right. hours for probiotics. Right. So, Here we go. Uh, b before we go, we've got about a uh, half a minute left. Yes, sure. Transnasal endoscopy. Yeah. What are your uh, What is your final message with regards to? I think when you need to have endoscope, know there's a much more comfortable way, a shorter way. You don't need to be sedated and have your whole day ruined. It's a much comfortable way to have your endoscopy that you probably need. Right. On that note, we'd like to thank Dr. Prabjot Singh Sidhu, a consultant gastroenterologist. He's also a hepatologist from Ramsey Syme Darby Healthcare, joining us right here on Medical Today. If you have any inquiries with regards to medical conditions, if you have a question for our doctors, send it to medicaltoday.my. That's ASK at medicaltoday.my and we'll uh, furnish you with your answer and also with a nice set of vitamins courtesy of one of our sponsors. Thank you very much for joining us on this week's Medical Today. I'm Jared Rodnam signing off. You have a great weekend and a fantastic week ahead. Brings you the latest in current affairs, lifestyle and entertainment. As well as one-on-one -on -one discussions with fascinating personalities. Only on Onama News Channel. isu semasa merangkumi politik, ekonomi, sukan serta hiburan membawakan anda agenda pentas dunia 
Saksikan Ruang Bicara setiap Isnin hingga Jumaat di BNC. Laporan pelbagai dimensi memaparkan isu semasa pelancongan warisan dan budaya dari dalam dan luar negara. Saksikan jurnal bernama setiap Isnin di Bernama News Channel. Semuanya tentang anda. Ini Lokman. Trendy orangnya. Setahun 5-6 kali.